<laughs> sim cats. Sim cats. About a week ago, I published my full review for the Pico 4. Now, some of you guys might have been disappointed that I didn't talk about sim racing in that video, but there was a reason for that. I wanted to publish a conventional review for the hardware, so the headset and the controllers, and I really wanted to break out sim racing into its own separate video. Um, but I will say, though, if you are only interested in maybe looking at this headset for sim racing purposes, um, watch that video, at least the first half of it, because I go over you know, some of the pertinent features about the hardware, the specifications, which I'm going to basically skip in this video since I've already covered this and I don't want to sort of regurgitate the same material. Um, so we're talking about specifically sim racing purposes. If you're only interested in getting this headset for PC sim racing, that's what we're going to do today. For PC gaming, you can run this headset either wired or wirelessly. Now for sim racing, I suggest wired. That's the best way to run the Pico 4. And this is to do with latency. Now, if you run it over a wireless network, you're gonna have a bit of latency, which is something that's not noticeable or less noticeable when you're playing room scale games, which are slower paced. When you start getting into fast moving action like sim racing, then uh, you wanna reduce that latency. And the only way to do that really is to use a cable. So I'm gonna talk about cables first. So let's move this out of the way. This is a typical type of cable you can pick up. It's a USB free cable. So it needs to be USB free for the bandwidth for the headset. And it will be a USB type A to USB type C. So from your PC to your headset. Um, so it's absolutely perfectly suitable for the purpose of the job. However, there is one limitation of this type of cable. When wired up to your PC, the battery in the headset is still being used. So although there is some charge coming from your PC and supporting the battery to extend the playtime, it's not enough to sustain it. So over time, over a long play session, that battery will run out. Uh, so yeah, that is a problem, but there is a quick solution and that is to use a similar cable, but with an extra feature, which is this little box here. And this is for adding extra power to the headset. So what you do is you get your original power adapter that came with your Pico 4 and the charge cable and you just run it to this box here and you simply just plug it in as before. So to the headset, through to your PC and what it will do, it will now sustain the battery on your headset and you won't need to worry about it actually running down. One final tip I want to share with you is when using one of these cables, make sure you securely attach the cable to the side of the headband here. Now I'm using some silicone uh, cable ties here, which I would recommend. Um, you could use Velcro straps, but these are better since they are rubbery and it, they really just hold in place so it won't slip around. Um, so that would be my recommendation as you really don't want this cable just flopping around. If you don't secure it to the side, you're going to add a lot of strain to not only the socket but the cable as well the you know the plug there and you know if you break it you know you could basically render your headsets inoperable which um, is going to be a bad thing so invest in some you know simple silicon cable ties and you can see i can basically lift this up and it's holding in place and that's not even plugged into the headset yet but as you can see no strain on the actual uh, headset socket or plug itself by using these types of uh, silicone cable ties. So there you go, that's the brand I'm using here. You can find them on uh, Amazon. Uh, but yeah, really, really useful. With my Pico 4 wired up to my PC, we can move on to the software setup. This is the Pico Streaming Assistant. You'll need to install this first. It's a simple application that streams the picture of the game rendered by your PC through to the Pico 4. You can see we have wireless and wired options. As my headset is tethered to the PC with a cable, I'm going to select USB. This is what it looks like through the color pass-through camera when you power on the headset and prepare for your session. The visibility is clear enough that I can still operate my PC here. So what we need to do here is set up the VR boundary and it's a simple case of getting seated, selecting the appropriate mode, which is seated mode and the boundary size. Select large as we don't need to be concerned about walking into a wall while seated. Now go to the apps library and launch the streaming assistant and then click connect. And that's the setup, you're done and now you're connected to your PC.
Moments later, Steam VR will run and display on your headsets and you can launch the game from here. Of course, if you've never used a VR headset on your PC, make sure you do install Steam VR first. It is available on the Steam Store. Once the game has loaded, you'll operate the game menus with your mouse and keyboard and not the Pico Hands controller. If this is the first time you're running the racing game in VR, don't forget to map a button to recenter the VR view. Okay, before we do some actual racing, I'm going to return back to the streaming software to show you the settings screen. So up here is a little cog, and if you click on that, you get to the settings. Now, these are not the default settings. These are my settings. And you'll find that when you go into this for the first time, the settings will be different. And you need to adjust this depending on the performance of your PC. So it's very much uh, trial and error. Do some gaming, see if it works for you, and then come back and make some changes here. So my settings are not what you should actually run unless you're using the same hardware as me, in which case you're going to be absolutely fine. So you'll need to adjust this exactly what suits your PC. So be prepared to do a bit of trial and error here. Now the first thing at the top is resolution. So that's the render resolution of the game. And you can see it gives you some options, effectively some recommendations. Um, so you could use this or you could go with your own settings. Um, ideally, actually ultra, I can run it ultra, but you may have to run HD or lower. But um, I would say the sweet spot of actually looking pretty good is HD. I'd say HD is pretty good here. Um, now, what does that mean in render resolution? Well, to find out what that is, you need your headset connected up to your PC with Steam VR running and then go here and settings and we can see the resolution per eye. For HD is 2160 by 2160 per eye. If you want to go back and change the rendering resolution, unfortunately you will need to quit Steam VR first, and then select another option here, then reconnect through the streaming app on your headset. Now we can see the render resolution has changed to 2560 to 2560. So indeed, anytime you want to make a settings change here, you need to quit Steam VR, make the changes here, save it, and then reconnect your headset for those settings to take. The bit rate is the quality of the video that's been streamed to your headset. So the higher the bit rate, the better the quality, the lower the bit rate, the lower the quality. So ideally run it 150 megabits per second. I think most PCs should be fine with that. Otherwise, if you do experience um, lag in games, um, it could be the bit rate or it could be the resolution scale. So you need to kind of work out which is which by just to basically trying different resolution scales and different bit rates. Now, if you work out there is the bit rate, then just lower it down in increments. Uh, but ideally try and keep it as high as possible. The refresh rate is an important option to take note of as the default when you use the settings for the first time it will be set off that toggle and that means you're locking the headset at 72 hertz or 72 frames per second. That will be the maximum frame rate that the headset will run at. Now to get 90 hertz, 90 frames per second, you flip that toggle, save it, and then also note that there's a similar toggle on the headset settings. So you'll need to flip that to on as well. Otherwise, if you only do it in the software here, you'll still be locked at 72 hertz. So make sure you don't forget that one. Ideally, do not turn on frame buffering as it will likely introduce some unwanted input lag. The codec is the compression format of the video stream. The default is HEVC and leave it on that. It's the newer, more efficient standard. HEVC compressed video provides better quality output over AVC when compared at the same bit rate. With the bit rate set at 150 megabits per second, I wasn't able to tell the difference between the two codecs. Lowering the streaming bitrate to 100 megabits per second, however, and HEVC did provide a slightly better, less compressed looking video output, but still very close. So I'll give it to the HEVC um, as the better codec to use, but it may also depend on your video card. So maybe check them both, see which one works best for you. 
Frame interpolation is a feature that helps reduce stutter from the result of frame drops. The software produces frames from previously rendered video frames and essentially fills in the gaps to maintain a smooth frame rate. So it's a clever prediction technique that creates artificial frames. It's a useful fallback solution but does struggle with the fast pace of racing games so it may not be that much help here. I have this turned off mainly because my PC is powerful enough not to need it. If you're having difficulty with inconsistent frame rates, I would suggest adjusting the in-game graphic settings to gain some performance as your first measure. Also maybe dropping down to 72 Hertz and lastly, the resolution setting. The resolution affects the sharpness of the image, so that would be the last thing I'd want to target. Image sharpening is exactly what it says on the tin. Running HD or Ultra, I wasn't able to tell a difference between image sharpening on or off everything looked sharp already at those resolutions. However, lower resolutions definitely do benefit from this feature, indeed bumping up the detail and clarity that it advertises. Now it doesn't completely transform the blurrier visuals of the low resolution demonstrated here, but this is a noticeable and welcome improvement, so it is a good thing. Um, so yeah, it works, and I would recommend you leave it on, I guess regardless of what resolution you have set, as it doesn't seem to impact PC performance either way. So it's a free boost in visual clarity with no downside. If you turn on the performance panel before connecting, this will plant a useful panel displaying a real-time performance monitor, and this is extremely useful when tuning the settings. With this, we can see if we're maintaining a steady frame rate, and also identify any bottlenecks that are affecting performance. When it comes to in-game graphic settings, don't use ultra settings. Usually the difference in visual quality between ultra and high settings is marginal at best, but the impact to performance can be quite significant. So high settings is the limit you want to aim for. And for sure, you'll be running some settings at medium and even some at low to eke out gains. Each graphic setting makes a small difference. This all adds up to help optimize or hinder overall performance. And that's what it's all about for VR racing games, making adjustments around the visual fidelity elements to maintain a stable frame rate. And it's all very specific to the end user's PC. So beyond the essential elements I've covered here to get you started, there's nothing more I can share with you. You need to experiment yourself. Once you've become familiar with your Pico 4, then you can endeavor to explore some more advanced tweaks and maybe something for future videos. But for today, the guide is there just to get you up and running with the fundamentals. So hopefully that all helped. Before we end this one, let me demonstrate sim racing over a Wi-Fi connection to show you why I recommend a wired connection using the same ultra settings and 150 megabits per second streaming. The frame rate wasn't able to maintain the 90 FPS 100% of the time, though it did settle down and managed to work well for quite a lot of the race, but the wireless connection doesn't always provide a certainty for lag-free gameplay throughout the gaming session. And for racing, that's not a good thing, so wide is my preference, as I know that's going to be always going to be consistent, always stable. Uh, but for other VR gaming, I do play my PC VR gaming over Wi-Fi, so it is just fine. It's just about picking the most appropriate option for the type of gaming experience, so kind of that's where it's at. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Hope you found it useful. Please drop your own tips below the video, uh, your own comments. Um, yeah, I might have some more tips coming up as well on how to uh, improve your gaming performance with your Pico 4, so uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, today, that's it for this one. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and happy simming. Bye-bye for now.